I swear to you, he pulled me over for it. You can check it, though. But yeah, he pulled me I, over last week for it. It's dark as hell. Yeah. He pulled me over last week okay. for okay. it. Don't, don't you touch, touch me. me. Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. Whoa, whoa. You got a problem? Whoa, you grab me! Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops, where we dive into the shocking world of law enforcement gone wrong. Today, we're exploring a story about corrupt cops who pushed their actions too far, only to realize they destroyed their own careers. What happens when those who are sworn to serve and protect cross the line, putting everything on the line? Join us as we uncover the downfall of those who thought they could get away with it. If you like this video, press 1. On November 29, 2017, Officer Phil Kowski from the Bristol, Tennessee Police Department stopped Sam Lundberg the daughter of Tennessee State Senator John Lundberg, for a suspected window tint violation. The ensuing interaction was recorded on Officer Kowski's body camera. I swear to you, he pulled me over for it. You can check it, though. But yeah, he pulled me I, over last it's week for it. dark as hell. Yeah, he pulled me over last week for it. But he checked it and said it was fine. I don't think it is. I swear, he pulled me over right in front of my house. On King Kong, like near King Kong. Sam? No. You know how dark your window tint is? Oh, Officer McDaniel checked it last week in college. Hold on one sec. Okay. Got another officer's got a little meter that he can put on it. You close to Weaver Pike and Southside. Stand for, please. It's dark as hell. But, uh, it's so but yeah, I, Mc, Officer I McDaniel um, checked it last week, like literally in front of my house. He pulled me over because, no, he checked, pulled me over in October because my tags were expired. Mm -hmm. And um, he checked it then. Okay. You don't have like a medical exemption or anything like that, do you? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. why, why is it so dark? <laughs> Other than it looks good. I don't know. I mean, I. It's been like this for a year and a half. Well, I've right. been pulled over for it twice, but they've checked it both times. McDaniel pulled me over twice for it, and he's checked it both times. Do you use one of the cards like this, or do you have a meter? Use the card. All right. Carter's on his way here. He's got a meter. We can check it. Officer Kowski tries to block the microphone on his body camera and hints to Miss Lundberg that her father contacting the police chief might halt the department's stringent window tint enforcement efforts. Under Tennessee Code Section 39-16-102, it is a felony to offer, confer, or agree to confer any pecuniary benefits, defined in Section 39-16-101 as money, property, commercial interests, or anything else, the primary significance of which is economic gain, to a public servant like Senator Lundberg with the intention of influencing their vote, opinion, judgment, discretion, or any action in their official capacity. Nonetheless, since Officer Kowski did not provide any pecuniary benefit to Senator Lundberg and merely suggested that Miss Lundberg's father might intervene regarding the window tint crackdown without offering anything in return, his actions do not amount to bribery under this statute. Similarly, Tennessee Code Section 39-16-402, which outlines the official misconduct statute, states, 
<laughs> you got your license on you? Yeah, I do. Alright, sit tight. <laughs> South side, right here at Weaver Pike. Your window tent meter. Mm-hmm. Y'all trying to get it shut down, aren't you? Yep. Need the window tent meter. How's this thing work? You just stick it on. Just stick it on there. All right. She says Mac pulled her over the other day and said it was good. It looks real dark to me. What if I don't want him to check my window tent? I don't like you. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why don't you like Carter? Okay. Alright. I'm going to roll this one up just a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> or that one. He might get his chin stuck in it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This one. Oh, that one. <laughs> what's 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 the legal on this meter? What's the legal limit on the meter? It's supposed to be 35. I usually do 30. What is it? 12. A public servant commits an offense who, with intent to obtain a benefit or to harm another, intentionally or knowingly commits an act relating to the public servant's office or employment that constitutes an unauthorized exercise of official power, commits an act under color of office or employment that exceeds the public servant's official power, refrains from performing a duty that is imposed by law or that is clearly inherent in the nature of the public servant's office or employment, violates a law relating to the public servant's office or employment, or receives any benefit not otherwise authorized by law. Given that law enforcement officers are also public servants, this statute applies to Officer Kowski. However, it is probable that a court would determine that while Officer Kowski was seeking a benefit, he did not perform an act that represented an unauthorized use of official power or exceeded his authority as a law enforcement officer. For instance, if Officer Kowski had threatened to arrest Miss Lundberg unless her father contacted the police chief, or if he had offered to waive the window tint ticket in exchange for Senator Lundberg's influence, his actions might have been deemed official misconduct. Since he merely suggested that a call from Senator Lundberg could affect the window tint situation, it is highly unlikely that a court would find Officer Kowski's behavior criminal. Well, <laughs> I, I think when Max stopped you, Max blind. <laughs> Dang. So, sit tight for me, okay? All right. All right. There's your idea back. Except, I hate doing this, but our admin's on us real heavy for window tent. A lot of us don't agree with it, but... My mom got a ticket today, too. <laughs> <laughs> where, and where? I was giving her so much for it. And now I'm like, uh, Graham? Oh, well, Josh is a jerk, so... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, don't tell people that. <laughs> No, uh, court date set February 26th at a.m. Uh, you do have the option of having it taken off and get legal limit, and the judge will treat it as a warning, and he'll dismiss it. I'm not even going to be in town that day. Uh, there's a number on the back but, there. You can call and have it rescheduled. Okay. Or you can just pay the ticket and leave the window tent as it is. However, it won't stop other people from stopping you. Wild. Okay. All right. All right. You just sign there. Not admission guilt. Just saying you receive the citation. You'll get taken care of. You'll appear in court. All right. Any questions for me? No. All right. Officer huh? Kowski measures the tint on Miss Lundberg's window and informs her that it is 12% according to Section 55-9-107 of the Tennessee Code. 
it is unlawful to operate a vehicle in which any window has a so-called visible light transmittance of less than 35%. Visible light transmittance is a measurement of the amount of light that can pass through the glass. So the lower the percentage, the less light that is able to pass through and the darker the glass. The window tint meter measured Miss Lundberg's window tint as 12%, well below the legal limit of 35% meaning that she was very clearly in violation of the Tennessee window tint statute. Unknown to Officer Kowski, Senator Lundberg was monitoring the traffic stop on speakerphone after the interaction. Senator Lundberg called Chief Blaine Wade of the Bristol, Tennessee Police Department, with whom he has a personal connection, to joke about the department targeting his family, since both his wife and daughter received tickets on the same day. This light-hearted call led the department to review the body camera footage from Miss Lundberg's traffic stop, resulting in Officer Kowski's termination. A departmental memo cited two reasons for his dismissal, his attempt to disable the audio on his body camera and his insubordination in trying to persuade Miss Lundberg to influence a change in police department policy that he opposed. Senator Lundberg contested Officer Kowski's termination and even hired an attorney to help reinstate him, but his efforts were unsuccessful. Officer Kowski appealed his dismissal, and a hearing was conducted, but the city ultimately upheld his termination. The department also sought a review for potential criminal charges against Officer Kowski, but a district attorney found no basis for any charges. In January 2018, Officer Kowski was employed as a corrections officer by the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office. Overall, Officer Kowski earns a B-. Although it was inappropriate for him to cover his microphone and suggest that Senator Lundberg contact the chief to influence the department's strict window tint policy, he maintained a professional and cordial demeanor throughout the encounter and ultimately issued Miss Lundberg a ticket despite disagreeing with the policy. While Officer Kowski's behavior was unprofessional, he appeared to have a personal rapport with Miss Lundberg and seemed to be interacting with her more as a friend than as an officer. Therefore, his termination appears to be an overreaction, likely driven more by the chief's embarrassment over Officer Kowski's perceived insubordination than by a genuine disciplinary need. Miss Lundberg receives an A for staying calm and respectful during the encounter, complying with the window tint testing, and not seeking or expecting any special treatment due to her father's political influence. Although her window tint was illegal, she had previously been informed by another officer that it was acceptable, and it is understandable that she relied on that information. Miss Lundberg demonstrated a good personal relationship with the officers involved and was commendable for not believing she was above the law. Moving on to the second incident. On November 9, 2023, an individual crashed his vehicle into several parked cars near the Bradley Beach Police Department headquarters in Bradley Beach, New Jersey. Sergeant William Major and an unidentified patrol officer responded to the scene. The driver appeared intoxicated, and the officers began investigating the crash as a DWI. As they proceeded with the investigation, Chief Leonard Guida arrived at the scene out of uniform and seemingly intoxicated, initiating a conversation with Sergeant Major. This interaction was captured on body camera. Hey, Ron, just pull that up and put it to the shoulder. Yeah. Thanks. The RMA. I, I am not the police, okay? I came here with the ambulance. I want to make sure you're okay. I, I, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know. I'm asking you if he's RMA or not. Oh, yeah, no. What? Yeah. I get that. Head he's giving okay. them a problem. He's that we need to be aware of. I can't get any. Can you tell me your Chief. first name at least? Cool. Now, why do you get a, sh a jacket on that, that stuff fit to be worn? What's on the back of it? What do you mean? Look at the tell me what's on the back of it. Oh, uh, it washed off. Yeah, then get rid of it. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay. You're a sergeant for God. Okay, Chief. Let me work this DWI, okay? 
Chief, I'm on a DWI. Over here. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Get over here. I'm on a DWI. Chief, I'm working. Get, get I don't have time to argue about a jacket, okay? Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have a problem? What? You grab me! What? Now get out of here! Before you get a problem. Take him, man. Take no, man. you're going to go in. Take him, man. Walk again. Whose keys are these? They're mine. Get out of here. No. Chief, get out of here or you're going to get locked up. No, you Chief, you're going to get locked up. You grabbed me. I asked you three times to leave me alone. You're obstructing my DWI. Chief Guida grabbed Sergeant Major's arm to pull him away from the accident, and Sergeant Major responds by slamming him onto the hood of a patrol car. After he releases Chief Guida from the hood of the vehicle, Sergeant Major then claims that Chief Guida was obstructing his investigation. Under New Jersey Statute Section 2 C-29-1, a person commits an offense if he purposely obstructs, impairs or perverts the administration of law or other governmental function, or prevents or attempts to prevent a public servant from lawfully performing an official function by means of flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. If a private citizen had tried to pull Sergeant Major away from the accident scene or continually interrupted his investigation as Chief Guida did, a court might find that they obstructed Sergeant Major by attempting to impede his duties through force or physical interference. However, since Chief Guida was also a police officer and Sergeant Major's supervisor, it is unlikely that a court would determine his actions constituted criminal obstruction, especially as he was trying to manage Sergeant Major, despite his misguided and inappropriate interruptions. Regarding the physical altercation between Chief Guida and Sergeant Major, a court might find that Sergeant Major's actions amounted to assault, but it is improbable that Chief Guida's actions in grabbing Sergeant Major would meet the threshold for assault under New Jersey law. Some states define assault and battery as any offensive touching, but New Jersey's Section 2 C-112-1 requires that an individual cause bodily injury for physical contact to qualify as assault. Section 2 C-11-1 defines bodily injury as physical pain, illness, or any impairment of physical condition. Unless Guida's attempt to pull Sergeant Major caused him pain, which seems unlikely given the nature of the contact, a court would likely rule that Chief Guida's actions did not constitute assault. However, Sergeant Major's act of slamming Chief Guida onto the patrol car's hood likely caused Chief Guida at least temporary physical pain and could potentially be considered assault. While New Jersey Statute Section 2, C3-3-3, authorize officers to use physical force as necessary for their duties, and Section 2, C3-4, allows individuals to use force if they reasonably believe it is immediately necessary to protect themselves from unlawful force, such use of force must be proportional to the law enforcement need or the force being defended against. If a court found that the force Sergeant Major used in response to Chief Guida's actions was excessive, he could potentially be convicted of assault. Chief Guida tells Sergeant Major that he is relieved, insinuating that the sergeant is being terminated from his position with the Bradley Beach Police Department. Unlike most private sector jobs, law enforcement officers receive specific protections from their employers since they work for the government. The Constitution's due process clauses protect all citizens from government actions, including when the government decides to terminate an employee. Most police department policies have strict procedures for dismissing an officer, typically involving a structured and formal investigation to ensure fairness and compliance with due process protections. Officers are usually given the opportunity to be informed of the charges, attend a hearing, and present their defense. Many officers are part of unions or have employment contracts that outline specific procedures for disciplinary actions and terminations, and due process protections ensure these contractual obligations are respected and that collective bargaining agreements are followed. The process for terminating any government employee is highly regulated and involves a complex set of legal standards and protocols that must be followed. Although the Bradley Beach Police Department's policy manual is not publicly available, 
An investigative report regarding Chief Guida, discussed in more detail later, indicated that he violated several provisions of the department's internal affairs policy by attempting to fire Sergeant Major on the spot. These violations included failing to provide formal notice to the accused officer, formal interview of the subject officer, the completion of a thorough, objective, and impartial investigation, among others. The report specifically noted that Chief Guida breached Rule 3B06 of the department's policy, which states, when using discipline, supervisors must comply strictly with the provisions of the department's disciplinary process. Additionally, the report mentioned that the Internal Affairs Procedures, IAP, require a comprehensive investigation with proper notice to Sergeant Major, formal witness and target interviews, the completion of an Internal Affairs report, the service of formal charges, and more. None of these steps were followed, even though a police chief can initiate the process and recommend termination. The authority to dismiss an officer immediately during an incident does not align with standard procedural and legal protocols, making it highly unlikely that Chief Guida had the authority to relieve Sergeant Major while investigating a traffic stop. You're relieved. Go in the headquarters and wait for me. Yes, I'm a crash. No, no, Billy. You're relieved. I have Billy. officers here. Billy. Right here. They Billy. could get waffled because my car is Billy. blocking it. Billy, you're relieved. No, Chief. No, Billy. Please, Billy. Don't. You're suspended, Billy. I'm suspended? suspended? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. suspended. I'm going home. Yes. Billy, come here. I'm going home. You're going, I, no, we you can't talk. Home. I'm suspended. No, no, no. No, no, no I'm no. suspended. I'm you're going, going to home. And you're going to wait for me there. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm suspended. Go you're going to go I'm going home. home. You're going to go in the headquarters and wait for me there. Well, let me work my crash. No, no, this no. This is why no, I'm here. Billy, you're suspended. All right, if I'm suspended, then I'm not going to wait inside. Nothing more to say. No, 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 Billy. You have to explain to you. Billy, you're suspended. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Wait for me in there. That's an order. Can you do me a favor? Can you put your car where my car is so our officers and first aid don't get run over, please? Thank you. See what happened there? Yes, Chief. What, did, what happened? There was some type of exchange between you and Sergeant okay. Major. Well, we're going to talk about that later. Everybody's got that. Billy, Billy, suspect. You really got this. What do, what do you have here? What do you have? Uh, we're trying to figure that out, Chief. Okay. Oh. Let me put in the there. Door. Yes, you're going to meet me in there. Go and put the door to me right now. There's nowhere to put her. She's going to ruin things. Okay, we'll leave her in there. Go in. Go in. Go in. I'm don't worry. i got people in the road. I want to make sure they're safe. I want to run you over, so watch no, out. No, no, no. Come on. Go ahead. You know I love you. Come on. I know. What? Yeah, what's wrong with you? Stop. Billy. Why would you do that to me? Stop. Billy. Stop. You got enough problems already, please. Okay. After Sergeant Major left the scene, the remaining officers continued the crash investigation. The DWI suspect was transported to the hospital, but fled before a warrant for a blood draw could be obtained due to the agency being short staffed that evening. The officer who continued the investigation after Sergeant Major's departure needed to return to patrol following their encounter. Both Sergeant Major and Chief Guida went to the police department headquarters, where they discussed the altercation in a conference room. Chief Guida initially suspended and disarmed Sergeant Major, but later decided to unsuspend him and returned his firearm that same evening. In addition to Sergeant Major, several officers at the accident scene reported smelling alcohol on Chief Guida's breath, while Sergeant Major asserted that the chief had been arriving at work intoxicated over the past six months and had exhibited similar behavior at previous crime scenes. At the time of the altercation, Chief Guida was already under investigation by the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office Professional Responsibility Unit following an anonymous complaint about two prior incidents in August 2023. After the encounter with Sergeant Major, 
the scope of the investigation was expanded. On January 18, 2024, the prosecutor's office sent Mayor Larry Fox of Bradley Beach a report detailing nine incidents involving Chief Guida from July 2022 through November 2023, documenting a total of 28 violations. The report accused Chief Guida of racial profiling, ridiculing employees in front of citizens, using expletives with staff, and physically confronting officers. Regarding the encounter with Sergeant Major, the report concluded that Chief Guida was under the influence of alcohol when he arrived at the crash scene, lied about not consuming alcohol before the incident, and violated internal affairs procedures by attempting to immediately negotiate Sergeant Major's discipline. A link to the full report is provided in the description below for those interested in more details about these or other incidents. Chief Guida was placed on administrative leave on November 17, 2023, pending the investigation. After the report was completed, he retired effective March 1, 2024. Notably, although the prosecutor's office sent the report to Mayor Fox in January, the mayor did not forward it to the Bradley Beach Borough Council until March 1, two hours before it was made public on the day Chief Guida's retirement became effective. Since an administrative complaint against Chief Guida had to be filed within 45 days of the prosecutor's report, the council held an emergency meeting on March 3rd to schedule a disciplinary hearing. Former Chief Guida then filed a lawsuit against the council, and on March 26th, the court vacated the notice of disciplinary action filed against him because the council failed to properly notify the public of the emergency meeting. The city council subsequently filed a new notice of disciplinary action, and Chief Guida responded by filing another lawsuit. As of the time of writing this episode, the litigation remains pending. Overall, Chief Guida receives an F for appearing at a DWI accident scene while intoxicated, attempting to micromanage Sergeant Major, and distracting him from his duties to complain about the jacket he was wearing. This behavior demonstrates a significant lack of professionalism and leadership as the head of the Bradley Beach PD. Chief Guida had no legitimate reason to be present at the accident scene, especially while intoxicated, and if he had attended, it should have been to support his team's efforts rather than to critique and distract them. Monmouth County Prosecutor Raymond Santiago stated upon the release of the report on Chief Guida that the findings outlined in this report unmistakably illustrate that over the past year and a half, Chief Guida has been an active hindrance to the very law enforcement agency he was entrusted to lead, and this encounter appears to be just one of many similar incidents. This interaction highlights how disruptive poor leadership can be to the functionality of a police department and how the individual in charge can cause issues that affect every level of the agency. Sergeant Major also receives an F for engaging in a physical confrontation with his chief in front of citizens, maintaining an unprofessional and argumentative attitude, and using excessive force in response to Chief Guida's interruptions. While I fully understand the frustration Sergeant Major must have felt dealing with Chief Guida, especially given the recurring issues, the level of force he employed was disproportionate to Chief Guida's attempts to pull him away from the scene. It appears that Sergeant Major became angry and reacted violently. Although his anger is understandable, it is unacceptable for law enforcement officers to use force in response to frustration, even against fellow officers. This altercation raises concerns that if Sergeant Major were to snap again, he might use excessive force against a citizen who upsets him. Thanks for watching US Corrupt Cops. Stories like these remind us of the importance of accountability and justice in law enforcement. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update on new stories of corruption exposed. Leave a comment below with your thoughts on this case, and we'll see you in the next video.